Stanford University, home of scholars and championship athletes. Both of these lifestyles require significant time commitments. When school and sports clash, an athlete typically sacrifices sleep for more work time. Combine this with practice times and student athletes typically have large sleep debts. We set out to get real perspectives on sleep from Stanford student athletes themselves. I feel like I can't really do anything in the daytime unless I have like a good night sleep. Sleep to me means the world. Uh, sleep is a time when I can recharge the batteries. Uh, I feel like if I don't get enough sleep, I can't perform. Simply something you do every night to rest and recover. Sleep means a lot. I really like sleeping, partially because I dream a lot, like really vivid dreams. You just kind of soothe my life. I feel like if I don't get a good night's rest, then I immediately have to go back to my dorm and like crash right away and like sleep until I'm satisfied. If I don't get enough sleep, then I feel very lethargic, can't think straight, can't articulate what I mean to say properly. Sleep to me is at these times and days everything uh, because I'm a father of a 10 month old girl and she doesn't like to sleep very well in it, so it's a struggle for me at the moment. Sleep means going to bed, and putting your head on a pillow and closing your eyes and being unresponsive for eight or nine hours. Um, I can definitely tell when I don't have a good night's sleep. I, uh, I drop balls. Decrease in uh, my ability to perform at my highest level when I don't get enough sleep. I stumble more. It affects my play. Lose with track of what's going on. I can't hit the ball as far, I can't throw as far, and not as fast. Definitely the better sleep that I get, the more energized I can be throughout practices and games. I tend to, um, Oversleep. I usually get enough sleep, and so it's not usually that big of an issue. I feel like the more sleep I get, the better I perform. If I have so much work that I'm not able to get enough sleep for two or three days in a row, I'd say that it, that it affects me pretty significantly. I feel almost like I bonk in the middle of practices. They have such a tough physical workload. The sleeping time is probably the most important thing uh, that is underestimated in athletics these days. I think it's especially important for their bodies to recover from a demanding day. Sleep is actually the time for the body to regenerate and recover uh, between the workouts and that's the time to let your brain basically regenerate and your body goes through, uh, you know, REM sleeps. I look at it as a main recovery and regeneration time for your body. I try to get to bed early, uh, close the blinds, make sure no light gets through. I normally try to go to bed as early as possible. Uh, the reason why I usually oversleep is because it takes me a while to get to sleep because I get pretty nervous and restless before competition. There have been times in the past when I had a hard time sleeping just because I was nervous, but it's been good lately. The night before a game, I try and get as much sleep as possible. The day before a competition, I try not to take a nap or anything. That way, I'm tired at a reasonable hour, so like probably around 9 or 10 o'clock. And if the game is early, I try and wake up so I'm not groggy the game so I want to wake up at least two hours before a game. The mental status of an athlete the night before a competition is very stressful. I think sometimes if, if you can load up on sleep earlier in the week it's not as important to get eight hours the night before a competition. So good quality of sleep is very very important. This year it was probably 7.2 hours I would say. On average eight, eight hours? About six to seven hours a night actually around eight hours. Eight to nine hours? Depends how much work I have. <laughs> I usually try to get about eight hours of sleep. I'm not a sleep doctor, but uh, I would guess about eight hours per night. I believe the literature uh, says between eight to nine hours uh, a night. I know in the military times, uh, six hours would be the recommendations uh, in order to prevent injuries such as uh, stress fractures, uh, which are very- I feel like I do. No. Yeah, I do. With homework and waking up early for morning practice, it's hard to find the time to sleep. Yeah, usually I do. So you got to balance school, sleep, and practice. So I feel like sleeping too much is contrary to performing at your highest, to tell you the truth, because you have to be awake to perform at your highest. Well, actually, recently I was diagnosed with sleep apnea, so I uh, I was uh, given a CPAP machine that I've been on for about a week now. 
and uh, that I can definitely feel after every night's sleep. I just have feel a little more invigorated. So I'm I'm, I'm excited to see what's gonna happen over the long term with that. Maybe over a month, I, I see foresee good things. I don't know. <laughs> First of all, a few things. One is uh, decreasing the immune response uh, of not just athletes, of regular people. Uh, if they're sleep dep deprived. Studies that show that actually the lifespan of people that sleep less is shorter. So there is a chronic effect on your uh, body and health. I know that the less I sleep, the more irritable I am. I know the less um, energy I feel like I have. More likely to be ill and injured if you're not well rested and not well recovered from the stimuli which is usually your exercise. Your reactions and your athletic performance performance is definitely going to be impaired, impaired from a lack of sleep and your coach you know it. I'm a lot less focused. I wouldn't know how to diagnose per se a sleep disorder but I would say she was she had the hard time uh, sleeping at night, hard time falling asleep. At that time I worked with the volleyball team and I used to take them through something called progressive relaxation, which is you go through each body part and doing a contract and relax. What I did with her, I actually recorded her, my routine of how I lead the athlete through a progressive re relaxation and she would do it before she goes to bed. I had a teammate uh, who used to always act out his dreams and uh, and, and speak and asleep and things like that definitely made for some interesting uh, road trips when we were rooming together when he would get up in the middle of the night and start screaming at the top of his lungs and freak me out. Hello there, Torsten again. Um, just giving you a little insider scoop on the sleep apnea machine. Um, I've had it for about a week now and you got a couple components here. You have a humidifier which you, I gotta replace the water in this but you put so and so much water in there every night kind of keep it the water a little more humid as it goes into your lungs so you don't like wake up and you're all dry and stuff but anyway you basically just strap this thing on your face like so and hit the button and then air starts rushing then you can't really talk <laughs> anymore but I mean if I take this out my face wow. you can hear that so yeah. it's just constant pressure so you have to breathe through your uh, your mouth or your nose the entire night. So <laughs> anyway, like. sleep apnea. Hola, Dr. Dement. El sueño es alerta roja. Kumbay, Dr. Dement. Sonia to hopi strayo. Hello, Dr. Dement. Shi 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 hong se ji pa. Здравствуйте, Dr. Dement. Sanlivosti ete pagizna kapasnosti. Bonjour, Dr. Dement. La sonolans ele signo de danger. Hello, Dr. Dement. Müdigkeit des Gefahr. Ciao, Dr. Dement. Sonolans ei un pericolo grande. Yes, no need, so sakana. Thank you.